Good morning and welcome to service. I'm so glad that you are here to worship with us today. My name is Melissa Johnson. I'm the Assistant Youth Director here at Trinity. We have some awesome things happening this morning. You're gonna hear a great message from our children's minister, Miss Paula, followed by our pastor, Scott, delivering a very special message and we have Matt, our youth director, preaching this morning. So check out these announcements. Friends, I've been missing your presence on Sunday morning, and I know you've been asking, when will we resume in-person worship? Well, our plan is to start on Sunday, June the 28th. Our bishop has given us guidance, and we have a resuming in-person worship task force that has come up with plans on how we can worship together safely in person. I thank them for the hard work that they've done. We're gonna resume our three services, 8.30 and 11 here in our sanctuary, our traditional services, and our 945 contemporary service in our Memorial Fellowship Hall. And in order to comply with the guidelines to be as safe as possible, we're gonna work at trying to keep it first, our attendance to 50 or less. So we're gonna need your help to ask you to make reservations. You can find out instructions on how to make reservations on the information we mail to you. You'll also find it on our website. If you're not ready to worship with us in person, that's okay. Continue to worship with us online. We're gonna to continue to broadcast our worship service every Sunday premiering at 9 a.m. on both Facebook and YouTube. When we gather in person, there are gonna be some changes, some limitations, but that's okay because we're gonna be able to worship God together. God's name will be praised in this place and we'll continue to be a people of unconditional love offering Christ healing, help, and hope to the world. I'm grateful for the task force for the tremendous work that they did in, in helping us get ready to worship again. I'm also grateful for all of you for your patience and your grace. We are Christ's body, and you're part of it. Thanks be to God. All right, so we are about to have a five minute countdown. This is your opportunity to go get your cup of coffee and also hit share so you can share the gospel with someone new today.
Good morning, boys and girls. It's good to be here with you again today. Come a little closer to the screen. Last Sunday, as the storm was passing through in Louisiana, Miss Sarah and I went out to the beach to look at the waves. Oh my goodness, I had not seen them that large in a long time. The lifeguard said he thought they were about 14 feet high. And Sarah kept saying that ocean just looks so angry. And I said, it looks amazing. How wonderful it is that God is present, even when somebody might think those waves look just terrifying or somebody else thinks they look amazing. God is always there when the waters are calm, when the waters are rough. God is always with us in everything that we do. Remember that as you go about your week. Look around and see where God is. Have a great day and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye. Good morning, I'm Barry Nichols. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for the blessings of seeing another day. We ask you to help us grow in your word that we may walk in your will. We lift up to you all who we love and care for and ask that you bless them and meet their needs. May your peace and joy fill our cups to overflowing and may your grace sustain us. Thank you for being our healer, our protector, and our provider and for every good thing, great and small, that comes from your hands. We commit this day to you and ask you to go before us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Uh, welcome to my wood shop. 
Uh, you may be asking yourself, Matt, you have a wood shop, you know how to use tools. You know, about three months ago, I would have had the same question, exact same question. But for some reason during this quarantine, I've I felt a, a call to learn how to make things. I was just working on this charcuterie board so we could put some delicious vegetables and meats and cheeses right in this thing. The other day, I even made a pair of chairs to go outside on our deck. We love the Home and Garden Network. The other day, we actually took a road trip to Laurel, Mississippi to visit the sites of one of our favorite shows, Hometown. We even got to take a look inside the wood shop that I see on the show and I just want to visit so badly. It was an amazing trip. As I've been uh, doing woodworking, I, I, I look at these creations. I look at this tray, I look at the chairs that I built and I look at them and I'm, I think, wow, those are awesome. I love those. I, I'm so excited that I made those. Well, it makes me think of this passage from 2 Corinthians 5 that says, when we are in Christ, we are a new creation. And I think of us as creation, God as a creator. God has made us and loves us way more than I could ever love this wonderful charcuterie board. But when God loves us, that sets us on a whole new path when we're awakened to that love. And that's what we're gonna talk about today uh, using Marvin Gaye's song, Ain't No Mountain High Enough, Ain't No Valley Low. We're gonna learn about God's unstoppable love today. So would you pray with me? Father, we give you thanks for this beautiful day. God, we, we thank you for your love for us and the fact that it is truly unstoppable. God, would you lead us and guide us as we listen to the passage in Romans 5 today. Lord, we love you, and it's in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is the second week of our series, Summer Mixtape, where we're walking through the songs of Motown, and we're talking about the book of Romans. I think we got off to a great start last week in our sermon series. Scott delivered a powerful message about Ben E. King's song, Stand By Me. And this week, we're talking about the Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell song, Ain't No Mountain High Enough, Ain't No Valley Low. Such a great song, such a powerful song. When you look at the lyrics to that song, um, you, you can sing it in your head. I, I know you can. Uh, ain't no mountain high, ain't no valley low, ain't no river wide enough. If you need me, call me, no matter where you are, no matter how far, don't worry. Just call my name and I'll be there in a hurry. You don't have to worry. And then we go right back to the chorus. Ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no valley low enough, ain't no river wide enough to keep me from getting to you, babe. That song was released in 1967. Uh, amidst a very controversial time in our nation's history and that song had such a unifying impact it seemed to me I obviously wasn't around but it seems to me that that song brought all kinds of people together and singing that song was just so unifying one of my favorite movies is called remember the Titans a film that came back years ago it came out years ago and uh, it was about uh, Northern Virginia uh, school that had come together with black and white and uh, the football team that played together. They were the only non-segregated football team in that area and they came together and won. But before that, they came together at camp. And while they were at camp, that seemed to be the song in the locker room that would unify them the most. And they begin singing together no matter who they were. This song talks about an unstoppable love, and I feel like that's what God has for us today, uh, a word for us today, that, that God has an unstoppable love uh, that we can, we can talk about. Um, I've always felt like Romans is such a greatest hits album. Uh, Romans has so many powerful passages. Uh, Paul was just so inspired to write so many wonderful things in Romans. So we're gonna read in Romans 5, we're gonna read uh, verse one through 11. So grab your Bible and here we go. Therefore, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our, le gosh, come on. Therefore, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. 
and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God? Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. It's a powerful passage, a very, very powerful passage. And I believe there are three specific things that we can pull out of this passage in Romans. And the first one is that God's unstoppable love justifies and changes our whole situation. So if we go back to verses one and two, it said, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace. So the first puzzle piece in this is having faith in Christ. And then we come to that word justification. That word may throw us off a little bit, but it literally means to put something right. In a judicial sense, it means to be declared not guilty. All of our past sins are no longer counted against us, and that is a beautiful thing. Not too long ago, I went out to lunch with some friends and I was sitting there, we were having a good time talking. We would bumped into a gentleman before the meal that I didn't even know that some of my friends that were with us, they knew. And we sat down to eat, we had a great meal, we had some delicious barbecue, it was awesome. And then we went to pay our check after this delicious meal. And the waitress said that, oh, someone paid for you. This gentleman that was in here before, he took care of your bill, you don't know anything. And I began to wonder, who would pay for my food? Why? Why? I don't, I don't understand. And, and I thought, wow, I, I had just met this person. I don't even know them, and they paid for my food. In a sense, in a very small example, <laughs> that you probably have to stretch a little bit, this is a symbol of how, of how God forgives our debts. I enjoyed that meal. I loved it, and I was ready to pay for it. But then when it came time, I couldn't. So know that through Christ, God has has reconciled us, has, has freed us from sin. If you go back up to the beginning of that scripture, in verses 1 and 2, it says we have peace with God. We have peace with God. And that is a beautiful sentiment, a wonderful picture to have peace with God. But when we dig into that to see what that really means, I went to the Latin which is, which is Pax, the Latin word for peace is translated to Pax. And one of the definitions that I found was tranquility and absence of war. And that was so affirming for me to realize that that is truly what this meaning of peace is. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Did you know that? Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And that gives me peace. To know that when we're born, We're essentially born with this attitude to serve ourselves. And there's no way we can ever truly reverse that, truly reverse that on our own. We need God's love to be able to counteract that. Jesus is the way to not be at odds with our creator. Still later in the passage, um, the beautiful scripture, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So if you don't think that God's love is unstoppable, it's captured right there in that passage. Even though we were sinners, Christ still died for us. That's a beautiful example of of how powerful and how unstoppable God's love is. So if we agree that God's love is unstoppable, the second thing in this passage that I think we need to know today is that God's unstoppable love should define our character. 
God's love should absolutely define our character. It should redefine who we are because we have a call on our lives to love like Jesus every single day. Verses three and four say, we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. Such a powerful passage right there. I, uh, I love baseball. Many of you that have uh, ever spent a few minutes with me know that I love baseball. In almost every sermon, I bring up baseball some way or another. Uh, there's a player uh, in the 1980s. He grew up in the 70s. His name was Jimmy Morris, and he was a pitcher that was capable of throwing very, very hard. Jimmy was drafted uh, fourth overall in the country in 1983 by the Milwaukee Brewers. He pitched uh, for, for, a, for a short time. Uh, he had so many arm injuries. He was forced to retire in 1989 after just a few years, and uh, he threw 270 innings in uh, minor league baseball. He never reached the majors, and he received, he just had over 10 arm injuries. Every year, he would be forced to miss time. In fact, in 1986, he missed the entire season. He had arm injury after arm injury, and he decided to retire in 1989. He retired in a city called Big Lake, Texas, and became a science teacher and a baseball coach. After a few years coaching his team, uh, his team wasn't very good, and uh, after a few years, they got better. And in 1999, 10 years after he retired, Jimmy was 35 years old. He bet his team that if they won the district title, he would try out for a Major League Baseball team. The kids believed in him. They knew he could still throw hard. And even though he was 35 now and hadn't played professional baseball in over 10 years, he still agreed to it. Well, wouldn't you know, his team won the district title that year in their spot in Texas. And Jimmy kept up his bargain. He went and tried for the Tampa Bay Rays. And wouldn't you know it, during that tryout, Jimmy threw 12 straight pitches of 98 miles an hour, which is very, very difficult to do. After the next few months of playing in the minor leagues, uh, it was September, and the Rays decided to call Jimmy up to the major leagues to actually pitch for the major league team. So late in September in 1999, again, 10 years after he had retired, he was called on to pitch in a major league game. Jimmy just threw to one batter that night, but on four pitches, he struck that batter out, and the crowd went wild. You see, Jimmy suffered arm injury after arm injury after arm injury. But that suffering produced perseverance in him. And that perseverance produced character. And he was instilling that character into all of his players. And at the same time, he was instilling hope. Hope in those players. Hope in himself. Until he made the major leagues and made a big difference. So when we say that character leads to hope, who's hope? Our hope? The hope of others? Yes. The answer is yes. Through this quarantine, one of the neat things that has come out of it is a channel on YouTube called Some Good News with John Krasinski, who is formerly uh, the star of a TV show called The Office. John simply went through social media and different places and he found stories of hope. When things seem dark, when things seem dim, he found pictures and videos of hopeful things, like cancer survivors coming home to large groups of people, welcoming, welcoming them home. He found videos of grandparents that couldn't stand any longer to be away from their grandkids and wrap themselves in, in bubble wrap to go hug their grandkids. Stories like that that inspired hope. I think we can do that. And that actually leads to my third point, which is God's unstoppable love gives us purpose. Now, when we say that in verse, in verse 11, not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Now, at first thought, boast is a really loaded word. Boast is something you give to someone that is, is boasting about themselves, and, and that's really a loaded word. I look back in, uh, in the 1600s, uh, there's the Anglo-French use of the word boast. In French is actually a savante. 
That means to possess something remarkable or admirable. In the 1600s, the, the term boast was used to describe something remarkable or admirable. And I feel like the gospel of Jesus Christ is absolutely remarkable and admirable. I've been reading this book called Faith for Exiles. It's by a researcher named David Kinneman and an author named Mark Matlock. Um, they use this term to describe people in the church uh, called resilient disciples. They kind of break people in the church into different categories. And the highest category that they deem is resilient disciples. How they define a resilient disciple is one, a person who has made a commitment to Jesus Christ. And two, involved in a faith community beyond just going to a worship service. And they also agree with uh, one or more of the following statements. The first statement is this. I want to find a way to follow Jesus that connects with the world I live in. That's a good one. The second statement is God is more at work outside the church walls than inside, and I want to be a part of that. And the third statement is, I want to be a Christian without separating myself from the world around me. So I say, if we're to be resilient disciples, we have to boast outside the walls. Being a Christian isn't just something we can do on Sundays. Being a Christian, following Christ is something we do every day. We wake up and we take up our cross. Now there are moments where we're absolutely going to fail. We're absolutely going to slip and mess up. I do it all the time. But I hope in the first point you heard that we are justified. We are justified through Christ rising from the dead. So if we're to be resilient disciples, we have to boast outside the walls where the message of Christ needs to be heard. So if we agree that God's love is truly unstoppable, and there ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no valley low enough, ain't no river wide enough to keep God from getting to us, then I think we can agree on these few things. God's love justifies us and absolutely changes our situation. Jesus died and rose to free us from sin. The second is God's unstoppable love should define our character. We know that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. We know that those things define our character in the name of Christ. And we agree that God's unstoppable love gives us purpose because if we're truly desiring to be a resilient disciple, then we have to do that outside the walls of the church. In the name of Christ, amen.
today's message you heard, there is nothing that can separate us from God's love. So take that into your week, share it with someone new, and thank you so much for joining us today.